All right, in this video, I want to talk about uh, factoring the greatest common factor. All right, really, factoring out the greatest common factor from an, an expression is really just the reverse of the distributive property. All right, remember the distributive property said if you had a times b plus c, that that was the same thing as a times b plus a times c. You could distribute the, the a through, right? All right, so now we're just going to work backwards. We're going to look on this other side and say, all right, we have all these terms for our expression. Um, do they have anything that's common to all of the terms? And if so, then we're going to what's called factor out what's common and write it as um, a product, right? Because to factor means to write as a product, right? So that's the idea. We're writing things as products. All right, here we go. All right, so this first one, factor... 7x plus 14. So the first thing you always look for when factoring is the greatest common factor. And uh, to do that, you look at all the terms. In this case, we just have two. Look at all the terms, and you say, all right, do these terms have anything in common? All right, is there anything that can be divided out of all the terms? Right? So we look and say, well, we got 7x, we have 14. Well, 7 is common to both those terms, right? So that means we can factor a 7 out. We can pull the 7 out in front. And then that, remember, this is the reverse the distributive property. So what do we have left behind? Well, if we take, uh, if we divide a 7 out of 7x, that's just going to leave us an x. And if we divide um, a 7 in, out of 14, that's going to leave us the plus 2. So 7x plus 14 can be rewritten as 7 times x plus 2. And we can check that by using the distributive property and say, well, 7 times x is 7x, and 7 times 2 is 14. So yes, we get the same thing back. We're just rewriting the, uh, the expression 7x plus 14 in a different way, a way that is called factored. All right? What about this one down here? Okay, 16y minus 24. All right, so looking at these uh, two terms, we say, well, what's common to both those terms? Well, everybody see that an 8, right? Sure, 4 would work, but 4 is not the largest, right? We could use 8. 8 divides into 16 evenly, and 8 divides into 24 evenly. So we can take an 8 out, and dividing an 8 out of 16y is going to leave 2y, and then 8 out of 24 leaves the minus 3. So 8 times 2y minus 3 is how this second one factors. And again, you can check it by distributing the 8 through, and you see that you get 16y minus 24. All right, what about this one down here? All right, well, there are the 9 and the 5. There's nothing common to 9 and 5. But notice that we've got a 9x here and a 5x squared here on the second one. So x is common to both of those terms. Right? We could take an x out of both those, and that would leave us 9 minus 5x. Everybody see how that happened? Right, if you distribute the x through, you would have 9x minus 5x squared again, right? All right, let's try, let's try some more. All right, so now i got these three terms up here. Now, um, we want to look for the greatest common factor. So we say, what's common to all the terms? Well, we can see we've got 2, 4, and 6. So we have 2 that is common to all of those for sure. Now what about the variables, right? Now notice that they all have variables. All the terms have variable parts, right? So the one way to remember, remember it is if they all have the same variable, so they all have x's here, right? The, the, this is x to the fourth, x cubed, and x squared, but there's an x everywhere, right? So if, they, if the same variable is everywhere, then the one that we can factor out is the one that has the smallest exponent. I'm going to say that again. We can factor out the variable with the smallest exponent, right? So you have x to the fourth, x cubed, and x squared, so we can take an x squared out, right? And everybody see that we would leave behind. If you take a 2x squared out of a 2x to the fourth, that's going to leave behind x squared. And if you take a 2x squared out of a negative 4x cubed, that's going to leave minus 2x. Everybody see that? And if you take a 2x squared out of a 6x squared, that's going to leave plus 3. All right, then you can check that by distributing the, the 2x squared through. Right, everybody see that? And you get the same thing that you started with. When, when they have variables there, you, you can factor out the one that has the smallest variable, that, but that means that it has to be a variable everywhere, right? Look at the second one. Look at number 5 down here, right? So you have 9 and 27, so we know we can take a 9 out. And then we have a squared and a cubed. Right, so we can take an a squared out, so we take out the smallest exponent. Then we have an x and an x cubed, so we can take an x out. And we have a y here and no y over here. Everybody see that? 
All right, so there's no y's we can take out, right? That's as far as we can go. The greatest common factor is 9a squared x. And if you factor that out, that's going to leave behind y minus 3ax squared. Everybody see that? And if you distribute the 9a squared x through, you'd have 9a squared xy, the first term, minus you'd have 27a um, cubed x cubed, the second term there, right? All right, so this is it. This is the factored form. The greatest common factor is 9a squared x, just like number 4 here, the greatest common factor was 2x squared. All right, so we're just rewriting our expressions in a different way using the reverse of the distributive property. That is the idea of the greatest common factor. All right, now that leads us to something like the following. All right, so now we have this a times x plus y plus 4 times x plus y. We're, we're going to look at this as as two terms. This part right here on the left, a times x plus y, um, and the 4 times x plus y being separated by this plus here, right? If you look at these and the, if you look at these two things as two separate quote unquote terms, we say, all right, well, what do they have in common? Well, we can see they have x plus y in common, right? So we can factor an x plus y out, and that would leave, if you take an x plus y out of this part, that's going to leave a, and then you got a plus, and if you take x plus y out of this second part here, that leaves a 4, and that's it. You have x plus y times a plus 4, that's how this factors. So the greatest common factor does not necessarily have to be a monomial, right? It can be an expression, it can be a, a, a polynomial, more than one term, right? In this case, the greatest common factor was x plus y, and the one down here, the greatest common factor is well, you've got x times y minus 4 minus z times y minus 4. So they both, looking at this and this, they both have y minus 4 in common. So that's the greatest common factor. So factor the y minus 4 out, and it leaves x minus z as the other factor. Everybody see that? So the point I want to make is that the greatest common factor does not necessarily have to be a monomial. All right, I got one more I want to show just to get the idea across. All right, number eight. All right, so you've got c times a minus 2 minus b times 2 minus a. Now, at first glance, we look at this and we say, well, there's nothing, there's nothing in common, right? Because a minus 2 and 2 minus a are not the same thing. But I want to point out that there's some algebra we could do to make them be the same, right? We can always factor a 1 out of, out of anything. We can always factor out a negative 1 out of anything. It doesn't matter. Right? You can always factor a 1 or a negative 1, right? And that makes sense, right? Because 1 times a is a, right? And negative 1 um, times negative a would also be a, right? So we can factor a 1 or a negative 1 out of anything. So looking at this second part here, this 2 minus a, we say that, hey, 2 minus a is really close to a minus 2. They're not exactly the same, no. But they're the opposites of each other, right? I mean, we could go... If you have 2 minus a, we could rewrite that as negative 1. Take a negative 1 out of that, and maybe negative 2 plus a, right? And then we say, everybody agree that's true? If you distribute the negative 1 through, you get 2 minus a, right? So all we did was just factor a negative 1 out because, well, we can. And we say, oh, well, look at negative 2 plus a. That's the same thing as a minus 2, right? So we just rewrote it. So really, this 2 minus a is the same thing as negative 1 times a minus 2, right? And all of that is going to be multiplied times this negative b, which makes it become what? So the next line we write down here is we have c times a minus 2. We have this negative 1 that we're factoring out of the 2 minus a here, right? Times this other negative, which is going to change it to a plus. Everybody see that? The b and then a minus 2. Everybody agree? Because 2 minus a can be rewritten as negative 1 times a minus 2. And so we have negative 1 times negative b is going to give us the plus b. Changes it to a plus there. And then we have the a minus 2. Now we say, hey, look, these two things now have a minus 2 in common. So we can rewrite this as um, a minus 2 times c plus b. And that's as far as we can go. So I wanted to bring up this idea that you can factor a negative 1 out if uh, you need be, right? You can always factor a 1 or a negative 1 out of anything you want. All right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.